I was nervous about filming against The Void, but I've gotten compliments about it, so I appreciate it. On May 3rd, there was an amazing event happening on Twitch. Basically, a lot of educational content creators and OBS plugin developers got together and streamed for a whole day. It was organized by Finite Singularity, and it featured all those amazing people. And yes, including your boy. Everyone had a two-hour slot, and they needed to create something that was in relationship to OBS in some way. And honestly, I might make a video just summing up everything that was showcased because there was some mind-blowing stuff honestly but in this video i want to talk about my project so during the two hours my goal was to create a 3d perspective looking ish overlay i wanted to do the whole thing in obs studio using a couple of plugins i thought it would be a good exercise and it would be like riddled with tips and tricks on how to do certain things in obs for example how to turn the twitch sub goal into a circular goal everything was going well until like the last five minutes <laughs> where this happened Uh, hello? Hello? OBS? No. OBS? No. OBS? No. <laughs> hello? 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 <laughs> Please tell me I didn't crash. Please tell me I didn't crash. Yes, the OBS gods were against me. So after this stream was over, I couldn't even brag about what I had created. But enough talk. Today, I want to create something similar. I want to show you how you would go about doing it, being a little more practical. So let's throw it over at screen record again, level. I've been yapping about Owned Pro for a while now, but now they got something new, a stream overlay maker. On the left, under stream design, you will see scene builder. And the choice here is kind of wild. Owned is known for having the biggest library of overlays on the internet. So let's pick this one. You get a preview of what it looks like. You you can see your scenes, your alerts, your camera overlays, your starting soon screens, your stinger transitions, and just click create scenes. Congrats, you have five scenes already created for you. Let's quickly edit the text by clicking on it. And this is the scene builder with a lot of options. This text seems to be in that folder. And now I can type whatever I want. Nice. Now click save and copy the overlay URL. In your broadcasting software, you want to add a browser source, paste the link that you just copied and adjust the size. We know it's 1920 by 1080 and click OK. Congrats, it was that easy to create your starting soon screen. Do the same with the rest of the scenes and your complete setup can be done in 10 minutes max. Own Pro offers a gazillion more options, but I'll let you check it out by going to own.gg slash pro. That is O-W-N 3D dot G-G slash pro. Okay, so let's talk about the concept. The very first concept that I had was just using corner pin as the shader filter plugin to simulate perspective, just like you see I'm doing right now. And on that specific stream, I basically eyeballed it. I was like, hey, let's imagine like a corner and I'm going to use three color sources and I'm just going to eyeball it. The problem with that is that um, later when it was time to actually set up everything else, I struggled to have a realistic perspective. So I would eyeball absolutely everything that I put and none of it seemed to perfectly match. So this time we want to go like mathematically accurate. So it actually feels real, but also so that we don't have to worry about everything that we place because our initial setup will be accurate. So in order to have maximum accuracy, I thought, hey, let me go into Blender, which is a free 3D software, and let me create the scene that I want with the angle that I want. After all, all I have to do is basically render out one image and then follow the path and have this wall be a scene with the corner pin tool, this one another wall, another scene, sorry, and then the floor would be a third scene. Then you can go individually and populate those scenes. Now, I'm not going to lie. I recorded a full tutorial with that method. This is the result and I don't like that result. So this is the image that I generated and then I followed. I tried my best to follow everything. The problem came when it was time to put one accurate scene to follow the perspective outside of the bounds, outside of frame, right? So this goes like this, but I can't just stop because literally the perspective for it to be accurate would have to be outside and I can't see outside, so I can't place it. So although this technically works in a way, it's not accurate. I still had to eyeball the top right corner for that right wall, for example, and the top left corner for that main wall then the whole bottom part. So I ended up with parts that were like squished in a weird way. But if you look a little longer, definitely not accurate. That's when I did another render. I was like, okay, I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to do this render and then I'm going to do that render. And the way that I'm going to reach everything that's out of bounds is by setting my output scale to like 4K to a bigger thing. So I go to settings, I went to video, and then I just set this to something like 4K. So now 
<laughs> of course, it broke everything. So now that we have a huge canvas, by the way, you can hold space bar on the preview and zoom out. And basically the goal here was to import that full image. And from there, set it here. And not only this is 4K, which means that we were gonna maintain most of the quality on our final stuff. But of course, we would be able to actually reach those corners, meaning that every color source that we set, like the corner pin effect would be absolutely accurate. It would go from point to point all the way. And this is where I ran into another problem. I don't know if you can tell, but I cut out the floor, for example, here, just because it wasn't going to be in frame because, well, I don't need anything to be in frame. Technically, if I use this point to that point, the perspective is the same. Problem with that is we're gonna be using full scenes right? I'm going to be using a scene. The floor is going to be a scene. This wall is going to be a scene. This wall is going to be a scene, which means that I have an aspect ratio to kind of preserve in a way. Can I turn this off? So, well, now it's 4K, but this is going to be a 1080p scene. So I definitely need to make sure that I keep it the same. So we had to go back to Blender, <laughs> which is where I created this sort of box thing. I had to change the camera perspective. So it's like a tighter shot. So less distortion, unfortunately, less of that 3D stretch effect, but at least way more accurate. So I went here, rendered a an image. So that was normal. And then I took a screenshot of this scene so that I can overlap them. And that was the screenshot. From there, all I had to do is perfectly overlap them. Now my output was way bigger than that actually. 3840 by 3160. Clicking on the preview, holding space, scrolling back to zoom out. When you're zoomed in, you can also move around by clicking while holding space. So yes, my reference grid, I just placed it here. And then something else that I did is actually place a reference on my scenes. So my full scene with without a filter would just be a flat grid. And the reason why I created this in Photoshop is so I can have an idea of what's gonna be visible, right? Because in the final product, you know, it's not gonna be the whole thing. I actually recreated, like you might not see it here, but I actually recreated those grids to be something like 16, by nine, nine up, 16 on the side. So that would be like the correct aspect ratio for a 1080p image. Of course, here it's not the same on the floor, but I delimited it as you can see here with the selection to let me know, oh, okay. At the bottom here, this is where it actually hits. And of course that grid that I created there is also 16 by nine. So it's 16 across, and then you're gonna see it's nine from top to bottom. So that ended up helping me align things properly, but also have a visual clue of how properly aligned they were. Anyway, so using this image, what I did was import that image, that reference image, and then with the corner pin, I did my best to adjust it like so. So what you're looking at right now, and I know it looks like a mess, and that's what I meant when I said it doesn't fit properly, is the overlap of actual OBS sources and this just 3D image from Blender. So if I turn off the 3D image from Blender, this is what we're left with. And here we have three separate images, right? basic OBS sources, like image sources. But here's the issue. When you change the base resolution, it throws your layers pretty much everywhere. So if I want something to be assembled like that, what I did is put them in a group, just select them, right click, and then group them. That way, what I can do is go back to my settings video and just set it to 1080p. Boom, bam. Of course, it's gonna look completely out of whack. And now all I have to do is select both my three images and my grid, although I don't need the grid anymore, but let's keep it together and just match that highlighted part from our Blender image because that's what's gonna be visible, right? Scale it up if you have to, but keep them all together. And just like that, boom, you have your thing in focus. So we can turn off the referenced image and congrats, you have a 3D scene in OBS. Technically, you just have technically three images with the right proportions of the corner pin shader filter. Pretty cool, right? How do you make that into scenes? And we're gonna do that by using uh, the transform properties. So let's say flat ref here is my main wall. And if I go to filters, I'll see that it has color correction. We can turn that off, but it also has that corner pin that makes it quote unquote 3D. Of course I scaled it. As you can see, it's going way off canvas. So what I can do is just right click, go to transform and then copy transform. Let me create a new scene to demonstrate scene three. And let's say that scene three is going to have an image and that image is going to be whatever. That's cool. So scene three is just the flat image of Spider-Man. Let me turn this off to show you. I'm going to click plus. I'm going to add it as a scene. I'm going to find my scene three. And of course, it's just going to add the flat thing. So I'm going to go to flat ref, which is that image that I used. And I'm going to right click again 
just to show you copy transform go to my spider-man scene transform paste transform it's gonna make it big go back to my flat ref right click copy filters okay go back to my spider-man right click paste filters and now technically my spider-man is the same proportion and the same distortion the same perspective all i have to do now is place it in the right corner. And if we go back to that Spider-Man scene, since the filter was applied to the whole scene, if you follow me on Twitter, you must have seen this. You can actually move this in 3D space. Make sure you don't go out of the boundaries when it comes to top and bottom. Well, top is fine because it's not gonna appear. So that's pretty cool. And this is exactly why we used this reference image with the colors and stuff. Because if I turn this off, I can tell exactly which parts are going to be visible in my final image. So if I go in my Spider-Man scene and I add that, bring this up, go back to my 3D scene. I know that top left corner stops at blue and then only half of orange on top right is going to show. Now I can place my image to fit, but also to center it. If I turn the scene on, there you go. Now Spider-Man is centered in that scene. Now you basically do the exact same thing for the rest. And let's do that right now. We can have a scene called right side for the right side, any image. Add that scene, right? Go to the appropriate reference, copy transform, right click, paste transform, go to that reference again. Make sure you don't have any unwanted filters like the color correction filter, right click, copy filters, right click, paste filters, and then place the right corner. You can use the arrows on your keyboard until it looks good enough. Finally, we have the floor. <laughs> Let's use this image, add it as a scene, find the right reference, turn off the color correction here, just the corner pin. Color correction was to lower the opacity just so I can overlap stuff. So now I can copy transform, paste transform, copy filters and paste filters. Then of course we just have to, you can see like the distortion is kind of wild on this one, but you gotta do what we gotta do. All you need to know is that again, you can move things in 3D space from now on which means that you can place anything. So if scene three is supposed to be your starting soon screen, let me do a couple of things to make that happen. And of course you can use whatever service that you use for your alerts and your widgets. In this case, I'm going to use owned. So I already have one here with labels, just copy the browser source, or I can just open this scene and edit it. You can see here, I just have the chat on the right side here. Then I have my labels going on. I can add whatever I want. They have a bunch of widgets. They even have browser source. So if you want to play something from any website, it will show up specific gifts or whatever. All of that can be easily integrated into whatever overlay you want to create. I just like using it as a browser source on top of my OBS. Add a browser source, paste the link, put the right dimensions, click OK. Eventually something will appear. There we go. I have the, is that the right one? I don't know if that's the right one. Let's go back and replace that. There it goes. So it should appear and you can see everything is already in 3D space in a way. <laughs> But we can still scale. We could still use OBS the way we would use it just normally. I'll place this right here. And technically my chat is active right now. If I go in and talk to Nightbot a little bit, we see it appears right there. So we have chat, so which means our actual scene, if we turn off everything underneath it, <laughs> will look like this. We can probably create a reflection effect with the floor here. So let's go to bottom. I'm gonna copy that image, duplicate it, right click, transform, and we're gonna flip vertical. We'll go back to our 3D scene, not bad. Bottom, control D to center it, and now it should fit. So we can do that on the right side also. Right click, paste, duplicate, control D, turn off the Valorant stuff and have it like that. And now technically we should be able to add specific effects to those scenes. So right side, if I want that to be blurry, I could add, yeah, whatever type of filter I want really. You can see it was blurry here. And then the bottom one, if I wanted to be wavy, maybe simulate some sort of um, water. I can add the shader filter plugin. So we used the seasick shader and now it's moving like it was water. And this is all in OBS. Um, even though <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, uh, you can see that my CPU is at 0.1%. That's because I have like a beast of a laptop right now. So most likely this is gonna break your computer if you do that. <laughs> it would be better if you just create the graphic and have it as one like video file or WebM file or something like that. But it's cool to know that OBS is capable of doing that. Uh, maybe a timer in a clip on the right scene. Pretty sure own has a timer. There we go countdown oh it even has some text we have some options the countdown starts over after finishing you can set the header message which is pretty nice but also the format days hours minutes we don't need all that we just need minutes and seconds copy the overlay back in obs it is the right one so 
browser, timer. If you're wondering why I'm giving them weird names, it's because I have a ton of other, <laughs> other sources with probably the same name in the same OBS, trying to avoid problems. Oh yeah, I forgot, we put a blur on this. <laughs> so if you don't wanna have that problem, you can add the blur to just the background instead of the whole scene. And now only the image is blurry and my timer is clean. Let's add a media source because that's what I would use for playing a clip. I don't think I have any gaming clips on this computer. If you haven't seen my video about five tips to make viral gaming clips, <laughs> uh, go watch it. As you can see, it's immediately huge. We're just gonna place it. Again, we can turn off the whole 3D thing in order to edit it, but I don't mind. I kind of like the way it looks. Oh, and look at that. Owen actually gives you a preview of the fonts if you wanna change something. Oh my, and just like that, I would probably throw like a, like the Twitch sub goal at the bottom here to complete the look. Let me do that. And it's also a browser source. Bottom, paste that in. And in this case, we want one. 50 probably, 800 by 50. <laughs> we can see gaps here. So all I can do is grab this, put it at the bottom, bring it up, bring it up. And there's transparency, so it's clashing a little bit, but it's barely visible. I'll let it slide. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna let it slide. And just like that, we have what we can consider a 3D overlay in OBS Studio that is fully customizable. This is definitely not a, you should do this. This is more of, you can do this. You definitely should not do this, but keep in mind that the whole 3D thing is not gonna be that intense on your CPU because it's just the corner pin, right? The only thing that is probably working on my CPU, putting it at 0.3% or 0.2% is the animated effect, the blur going on right now, and the wobble. The corner pin itself is just distorting an image or a scene, technically. But to be fair, this was just a mental exercise. So once again, corner pin filter is from the shader filter plugin. That is, I believe, the only plugin that we really used here. The shader filter plugin also has the wobble, it also has the VHS look, and it also has the blur. We use owned, which is coincidentally the sponsor of this video, to set up our browser source. Also, if you have a 3D software and you're able to do this, just make a 3D overlay. Just make a 3D overlay. You can do the same technique, but you know, build the rest of it, like add some like shelves to those walls to have things basically sit on them and all that. You can make it more complex and make it look really, really good utilizing your 3D modeling software instead of just going flat with what I have here. We can probably like duplicate this and try to fake some sort of shadow. Let me do that real quick. I think that's it. Again, don't do this. <laughs> don't do this. It's not smart to do this, but if you ever wanted to, OBS can do that. OBS can totally do that. So let me throw it to outro guy level. And there it is, just a concept that I had in my head and I absolutely had to share it with you. If you have any cool ideas, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. Also make sure you follow me on Twitch and I will see you guys next time. Go out there, make me proud, get level, and avoid out.